Now throw them in the fire. And then those guys fall dead. But the, the, the three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they fell into the furnace. The soldiers died. And he didn't care about the soldiers. But they fell into the furnace. And then the Bible says in Daniel 3.24 that King Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and asked, hey, weren't there three men that were tied up and thrown into the fire? Then he says, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. And that's exactly who he was. When you live in a society that is hostile to your faith, God knows it. God knows it. When you live in a society that is hostile to your faith, you will be invited to cheat on God. You'll be invited to cheat on him. You'll be invited to challenge him, right? You'll be invited to, to put him aside, to, to downgrade your commitment, your relationship with him. Idols will be placed before you, music, worship, horns, zithers, right? They'll play all kinds, of the, and, and that zither, man, people get down on that thing, man, and it'll draw you away. It'll take your mind off of what is important, what is really important, and you'll be expected to join in the ritual mass worship to a different God. But these men stood steadfast in, steadfast in the faith, and they refused to cheat. On God. So I really think reading this story and, and hearing uh, uh, what, I, what I've heard from, from the very beginning of the year, I think Randall is right, man. Out of all the things he's ever said. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I, I, think, I think Randall hit the nail on the head when he, when he says, man, what does it mean in 2018? I believe that God expects us to read a story like this and ask that question. To look at a story like this and all of the nuances, all of the suggestions, all of the similarities, all of the challenges, the conditions, all of these situations together, what does that mean in 2018? I think he's right. We need to ask that question. If we don't know our history, we are bound to repeat it. We are bound to hear the zither and all the music and the worship and be drawn away. Because believe me, the zither is playing. It's playing, man. It's, and sometimes they've just got that, that, that funky beat that makes you want to just move, you know? And it'll draw you away. And there are some who bow down and worship to the music. To everyone who heard this story, since this story was written, who refused to compromise their faith. They were encouraged to live for God. They thought, man, we live in a hostile society, a society that is hostile to our faith, that, is, that opposes us at every turn. But if they did it, and if God was with them in the worst of times, God can be with me in the worst of times. And they were encouraged to live their faith in God. The devil is arrogant. The devil is bold. The devil invades every part of our society to influence and distract us. Every part of our society to try and get us down. And it doesn't mean that we retreat. It means that we can stand confident that what he's called us to, God is able to deliver us. But the devil will use all of his power, all of his power to convince you and me that we have no choice but to bow down and worship to him but you do have a choice. In Babylon, it was a golden idol. In Inglewood, it might be money or self or pride or drugs or alcohol or sex or video games. Hello, somebody. Or pride or gossip or pride or alcohol or pride or something else or a thousand other expressions of worldliness, flesh, but whatever it is, you belong to somebody. You belong to somebody. In the end, Daniel chapter 328, it says this. King Nebuchadnezzar said, praise 
to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This is King Nebuchadnezzar. Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command. My command, they defied me and trusted God. And God came and rescued them. They were willing to give up their lives rather than to serve or to worship any other God except their own God. So this morning, you belong to somebody. You already have worship music. I don't, I don't need that music. I don't need that, I don't need that idol. You already have someone to bow down to. You're, you're set. You're complete. If there is room inside of you for another idol, then, then you're not sold out to God. If there's space inside to give thanks to something other than to the Lord, then you're not committed to the Lord. You already have someone to bow down to. And if the world comes against you, the Lord will meet you in the furnace. He'll come in the trouble that Nebuchadnezzar creates for us. He'll come and unharmed and unbound. There in the fire, he'll walk with us through the trouble, through the hardship. It may look like a court case. It may look like some kind of other struggle. It may look like some kind of hardship, unrelated, totally unrelated to a faith matter. But he will walk with you because you have made him your God, that you are sold out to him in a relationship and you refuse to cheat on him. Amen. Will you stand with me this morning?